So in today's video, um, I'm going to be replacing the battery from this portable battery unit and I'm going to be placing the AC inverter which is built into it. Um, I've had this portable 5-in-1 power station thing now for probably about 8 years um, and when I first had it, it was great because I, I had a problem with the car, wouldn't start often because of the battery issues and alternator and it was fantastic. Didn't last very long though because of the battery and I opened it up and found out the battery that was inside was a really cheap one. Um, it didn't hold its charge, didn't hold its current, uh, wouldn't give me that power that I needed after a while. So I replaced the battery. Uh, this would have been about five years ago. Um, this has been one of those things that use, gets used an awful lot to be fair because not only will it jump start your car but it's got an inverter in the back to give me 240 volts this one here uh, and it's also got the uh, capability of pumping up a flat tyre it's got a built-in compressor um, that and the fact that you've got two cigarettes 12 volt outlets here which need a bit of a, a bit of a clean up as well so that's one of the jobs I'm going to be doing today so what I've decided is that rather than replacing this um, because I do like it and it does work very well when it's working um, just to put a different battery inside. Now luckily I already had a battery anyway uh, that can go inside. This is uh, actually uh, an 18 amp hour 12 volt lead acid battery sealed. Um, this is something that I've been using not permanently attached to anything. It's just been standing on a shelf uh, just uh, being used for a bit of lighting and some electronic entry uh, type equipment. Stuff that's not really used at the moment. So I figured rather than buying another one, and rather than buying another one of these devices, I'm just going to replace the battery, nice and simple. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Also, the inverter has uh, broken in this. Now, I've had a few issues with the inverter before. When I've opened it up, it's a really cheap one inside. Uh, almost to the point it's quite dangerous, I would imagine. So I'm going to strip that one out today. Um, I'm going to put this inside it. Now, this is a... 230 volt, 300 watt power inverter. Very simply, I'm going to strip it out of this metal casing here and I'm going to just put the bare gubbins inside the back of this unit where the existing one is. So uh, it's actually the circuitry in this one is a bit smaller. I believe that's a 200 watt inverter. Does it tell me in the front? Yeah, this is a 200 watt inverter. This is going to be 300 watt, so it gives me an extra bit of power as well. So a bit of a bonus there. So those are the jobs for today. Um, this has been used a lot um, camping. As you know, I, I like the camping and I do uh, build other various battery packs and such like. Um, but it's, I think a bit of moisture has just got inside uh, a few areas. So it's going to have a bit of a general clean up as well. So what we need to do first things first is to get this stripped down. So let's have a look. So we need to get all these, uh, all these screws out. This is often one of the trickier parts because the screws are quite cheap, fairly soft metal in there, and if you lose or, or damage the screw in any way then you're, you're stuffed really. So we need to uh, basically unravel the air hose just to allow us to, to prise this off here. Right then, so before we take it off any further we need just to have a quick look to see what's uh, what's catching where. Uh, we don't want to do any damage so we can pull that hose out a little bit more to give us a bit more uh, space to play with. Right we've got a negative cable there that goes to the inverter so let's, uh, let's take that one out. the fuse out of the inverter already um, but obviously these capacitors will still hold the charge so we need to be mindful of that we need to be careful. Um, Okay, trying to be as careful as I can and not to lose any of the screws as well. Okay, so let's get this battery out first of all. So we've got three cables, three wires going to this battery on the negative side. We've got one going for the inverter, one for the main jump starter, and clearly the other one's going to be for the front panel electrics, uh, for the outlets and uh, including the, uh, the charger. So we'll put that safe. And there we go, that one's out. Lovely stuff. Okay, 
So this is what we're left with then, basically. This is the inside of one of the uh, the uh, little power stations. So we've got the uh, the motor and the compressor there. All that's working fine. Don't need to touch any of that. Um, your cigarettes output, 12 volts, one there, one there. Voltmeter, we've got the button there to, uh, to test and the various plugs. Everything else seems in order. Doesn't seem any damage anywhere else. There's no moisture or water inside. So I'm happy with that. Okay, carefully moving that aside then, let's look at the inverter side of things. So this is um, uh, a repair that I did Again, this is going back a few years ago now where the original inverter broke. I remember now, I've forgotten about this. Uh, and I had to replace the inverter before. Um, so I can see where I've uh, done the repair. So let's first of all get some cutters. So we've got the, the live and the neutral. Now again, remember, this is not an instructional video. I'm not showing you what to do. Do not try this at home, okay? That's my disclaimer. If you're daft enough to try this yourself, then uh, you're daft enough and have to uh, pay the consequences yourself. I can't take responsibility for, for what you do. I need to get that in. Right, so somewhere we're gonna have a power switch. Um, the main and off, and I'm just gonna unplug that if I can. It's going to be a lot easier. That's that one there. Okay, so that's my power switch. I'm going to use that same power switch um, to turn it on and off because it's built into the back panel of here. Now I've prized it. Don't need that anymore. That can come off as well. And that's for the fan. Useful to have. So I'm going to keep the fan activated on that there we go and here is the old inverter uh, i'm not even going to waste the time looking at this to uh, sort out where the fault is it was uh, at the time quite a cheap nasty one anyway so i'm happy that we're going to just replace that one altogether okay so what we need to do now we're going to carefully just move this aside and then we're going to now strip this down take the gubbins off and uh, strip us down to bare basics. Right, there we go then. So this is the inverter that we're gonna be using in its place. It's a lot smarter, a lot neater. Now we have here uh, USB outputs. What I could do is to extend these and have these uh, mounted on the, uh, the front of the, the power station box, but uh, for the, uh, the trouble and the time and the effort really, it's not something I'm that worried about. So uh, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, but that's my uh, output, the voltage, 240. That's the 12 volt in. Uh, and this here is the uh, going to be the switch, which we're going to extend to the existing switch there. And then the fan will plug into there. I think the same plug will most likely fit. Yes, that looks like that will fit in. So that's just a straight swap. So let's uh, have a look at now mounting this and stripping it down and getting it prepared to be wired into here. So let's just tin these wires and then carefully heat those two together. Beautiful. Switches in there. And then the fan, which I want to keep. Take that bit of glue off, there we go. Okay, that's the fan in. And then this is going to be the cable. It will go straight to the battery, which I shall put some connectors on in a little while. Okay, so we're getting there. Okay. There 
Okay. And then that. On there like so. So that's the negative, that's the positive going straight to the fuse. We now need to secure this uh, inverter into its place, into its new home. So something else that would be useful for this is to have uh, Anderson power pole coming out the back. It's just a, a last minute thought of mine. So uh, I'm going to drill a hole in the back of this unit have a wire coming out something similar to this with one of these Anderson 12 volt power pole connectors so uh, let's get that done as well whilst I'm here So we need to make sure it's fuse protected. Now the cable, the wire that I'm using is uh, rated at 30 amps. Can't get the drawer out. go that's the positive yes nicely done so that's the positive there we're going to leave about that much on that get the uh, the negative About that much so there. okay what we've got now then we've got coming out of the top no fuse in there for the moment I'll saw that later but we're going to have the uh, Anderson power pole connected onto here uh, I'm keeping the fuse uh, close the way I have done uh, for simplicity really for me uh, I'm happy with that let's just get these uh, drips together a bit of tape inside just to keep them nice and tight together. Makes it a bit neater and it makes it simpler inside with less movement and less things getting tangled up. So with that in its place there to the right positioning, I'm going to put a bit of hot glue gun inside there now just to help waterproof this little bit and have to help keep it into place. Okay. You have to mind that. We don't want to be uh, getting in the way. So what we have now, we have the inverter in place, which is just now setting. Uh, we've made sure that we haven't got any cables or uh, any components in the way of any screws or any fixings. We've got the positives 
all together, taped, soldered, crimped, or the negatives taped, soldered, crimped, whatever, uh, they're ready to go. Um, and I think it's just now a matter of uh, tidying it up a little bit inside here uh, and getting ready to, to get it all together uh, and obviously getting the battery back into place as well. So um, let's have a bit of a, a quick sneaky look. Make sure we're happy with everything and the way it is before we go any further. Have to make sure because of the amount of current that's going to be flowing through these, we need to make sure they're absolutely tight, they're flat against each terminal. Uh, we don't want any issues later on down the line. Because these aren't the most convenient things, as you can imagine, to have to open and close. So you want to make sure you get it right first time. Okay, so that's the negative done. Let's now get the positive done. Okay, so things are wired in there pretty well. Let's just check now and see whether I can lie it down again. And just want to secure my new 12 volt Anderson power pole connectors. So a little bit of uh, hot glue just to help insulate from water and to uh, help just keep it into place a little bit. It's not going to go anywhere. I put a tie grip inside so it can't be pulled out for safety reasons. So it can't be pulled out but the, uh, the hot glue gun just helps keep it into place nicely. Okay, so let's have another go now at pushing all this back into place, shall we? So, need to make sure we pull the hose out as we do. Okay, so I don't know how much of that we've lost because I've just found out the camera switched off. Uh, but basically, um, we've got everything back into place. We've got the uh, inverter, the new inverter now fastened in. We've got the hose put away. I've still got to wire up my Anderson power poles there. Um, it's looking good. Work light works, that's a bonus. Compressor works. Yeah, we've got voltage there. Let's see if the inverter works. What have I got that I can plug into the inverter? Something visual. Okay, let's try this. Now, I need to put a fuse back in place. There we go. So, the inverter's working now. That should give me now, I believe, 200, uh, sorry, 300 watts. There's a 300 watt inverter put in. So, uh, yeah. Pleased with that. And then obviously this is going to work because uh, that's just directly straight to the battery. Um, and like I say, this is from the Anderson power poles that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm happy to have them floating around the top. I know some people are going to say, well, why not just mount them on the, uh, the front panel or on this side or whatever. Um, I didn't really want to be mounting them on the front because I've got this plastic screen that wouldn't be able to be closed uh, if it was mounted. Um, and I wanted to have them in the back, which is where I used to have my old ones on my older power supply I used to have. Um, it just fits more comfortably with me. And floating is nice because there's less strain on the socket without having a proper socket anyway. So uh, that's going to be perfect for me. Right. Okay, so that's it then. Um, quite, a, quite a good job, if I may say so myself. So thanks for watching again. Um, any questions, any comments, please comment down below. Um, this is going to be my next job. I'm just going to get some power pole connectors. Um, I'll be able to get some uh, hopefully later on today and I'll get that done. Uh, but now this is ready for action. So I think I first of all need to get this onto charge uh, ready, ready to go. And then we're, uh, we're all done. Okay, thanks for watching again and I'll catch you in my next video.